Hey everybody, we're back again for our last and final segment at our look at the films of the 1970s, the greatest decade in movie history in all three of our opinions. So today we're gonna to do a new category for us and that is we're going to uh, take a look at the 10 best picture Oscar winners from the decade from 70 through 79 and we're going to each rank them 10 down to one. I'm here with Brian, AYBL Maine, Doc, and uh, the usual threesome here. We're gonna take a look at uh, these best picture winners. Some are, you know, uh, justified in their wins, but some, you know, maybe got a, 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 a best picture win that maybe they didn't deserve. It was a close call with another, another film. But anyway, we're only gonna take the winners, not the nominees. And we're going to rank them, like I said, just to refresh everybody's memory. 1970 best pitch, <laughs> 1970 best picture winner, Patton. 1971, The French Connection. 1972, we had The Godfather. 1973, The Sting. 1974, The Godfather Part Two. 1975. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 1976, Rocky, 1977, Annie Hall, 1978, The Deer Hunter, and 1979, Kramer versus Kramer. Those are the 10 we're going to be ranking. Doc, you're going to start it off. We're going to do our 10 through 6, and then we'll circle back around and do our 5 uh, individually down to number 1. So, Doc, you're up first. Here we go, I guess, 10 through six and uh, ranking the winners of the Oscars from the 70s. Here we go. So number 10, uh, if you've watched any of these videos, I think you already know the answer. So it is Annie Hall. Um, personally speaking, never should have had it anyway. So that's just me, <laughs> but Annie Hall, um, definitely number 10 for me on this list as we go down, but um, I'll say this, nine through one is a lot difficult, a lot more difficult than putting Annie at number 10 for me. Number nine for me is Kramer versus Kramer. Um, I love the movie. Like I said, this, you know, uh, this, would be, this could be a list that changes any time for me at, at one point, but right now I'm doing this because this is what I feel. So Kramer versus Kramer at number nine for me. Uh, it's a fantastic movie uh, we've talked about this throughout some of these videos already but um, love the performances love the story and I, I love a lot of things about this movie and I think it's quite deserving for the Oscar that it did get for the best picture as well so that's my number nine number eight it's uh, One Floor with the Cuckoo's Nest for me um, this is kind of an iconic movie out of the 70s as well so like I said this list can change at any time but Tonight it's it's number eight. So uh, got a lot of uh, won a lot of awards, a lot of accolades, everything that goes with this movie, the performances. Um, touched on in previous videos from the guys as well, and and they're bang on because Jack's fantastic, Louis Fletcher's fantastic in this movie, and the supporting cast in this movie is pretty phenomenal as well. So the the movie also another deserving winner in my opinion. Number seven. I didn't want to put it here because I love the friggin' movie, but it is The Sting. Um, for me, um, maybe out of all these lists, I don't know, there's going to be a couple that I could watch at any given time. This would be one of them. Uh, the other ones I might have to put a little more of an effort into as much as I love the movies, but yep. The Sting, I love the movie. Um, yes, I do think it's an Oscar-winning, Oscar-deserving movie. Um, like You got Newman, you got Redford. Uh, Great little story that goes with it and uh, George Roy Hill who does this who, they've had a great rapport with the years with especially with Newman uh, and it shows in this movie as well then he did with Redford as well Butch Cassidy and so on <sighs> so that's number seven number six man that might have been six I'm at number six right yeah it's Patton for me at number six um, it's a powerful movie man and it's uh, 
it creeps up for me on this list uh, just the way it goes when I when I think about the movies and how good they are and stuff like that. Like I said, this list is uh, it's very personal right now. So Patton's an awesome flick, and I think it deserves to land uh, probably in the middle of the pack for the decade for me. So that's where I put it. Very good. Very, very, very good. I like it. Brian, what do you yeah. have as your 10 through 6? Okay, I'll preface it with of the 10 movies, whenever people ask me what's my favorite movie, I always say, well, we'll talk about film. We could talk about movies uh, because I look at them as two different things. There's something to be a good movie and not necessarily be a good film. Number 10 for me is the only one I consider just a good movie on the list. And I, I didn't particularly think it was a great film. And that's Kramer versus Kramer. So that's that's at number 10 for me. Not that I, there's not, nothing wrong with the movie itself. It's a fine movie. The performances are great but it's not a piece of film to me. I would never study it in a way in which, you know, look for something that was overly insightful about how it was put together. So I got Kramer versus Kramer at 10. I got Annie Hall at number nine. Now that's not a knock on Annie Hall. It's just that you're just, you're basically everything else now is the murderer's row of uh, Oscar winners. So yeah. it's a little, it's a little difficult to rank these from this point on. I've got Annie Hall there. I got at number eight, I've got The Sting. Which, you know, again, it's a movie that I really like, but, you know, you're going up against so many heavy hitters here that it's awful hard to rank it any higher than that. And I really genuinely like the movie. So um, number seven for me is The French Connection. And I do like a lot of the filmmaking that's in this. So, uh, um, so but the, again, you're just going up against so many great, uh, great films that it becomes really difficult uh, to rank these. Uh, but uh, just outside the, the top five, I've got Rocky at number at number six. So very good. Well, it looks like we have three. All three of us have three of the same top five. As I'm looking at, I've been marking what you guys have so far. My number ten is Patton. <laughs> to me, that that's the one I would least watch of all ten. That's the one I very infrequently go back and uh, check out again. So that's my number 10. My number nine, this is a tough one because I like the film a lot. And that's The French Connection. That's my number nine. Gene Hackman is the uh, is Popeye Doyle. Number mm. eight is The Sting. Again, you're, talk you're talking about the uh, cream of the crop here. And where, where do you put these things? Seven, Kramer versus Kramer. Uh, again I, there's not much to say we've talked about these films to death so we're just a matter of ranking them and just as sitting outside of the top five number six is Rocky Sylvester Stallone's uh, feel good movie so so for Patton what is it Rich that that keeps it that far down for you is it the length it's the length and uh i'm not really a world war ii buff so the subject matter a little bit i mean i i think it's a it's a well-made film i'm not going to say it's not but I've, I've, it's just among these 10 films that's the one that i would least likely throw on and or go out of my way to watch the other nine i think are excellent movies Patton would be to me a good movie uh i'm not going to say it's excellent because i i think i've only seen it one time so it's not one that i revisit uh, i like george c scott i like the story but i'm not knocked over by it so i don't know what to say <laughs> that's a good answer buddy and doc yeah, that, you said Doc, that's for you, you said that Annie Hall was mostly the, the formulaic approach that Woody ha Allen has to all of his films, right? That's kind of what the turn when he does was a those bit. kind of films. Yeah, yeah, I just find it so um, self focused on him, man. That it's um, you know he writes a bit. It's about him. It's it revolves around him. You know, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. care about him as a character um, okay. most times at those levels. Not to say that he's not a funny guy and he doesn't have quirky lines or funny lines and stuff like that. It's just 
it's just not my sweet spot. I, I can't get around that. There's, Let me ask right. Doc a question while we're talking about Annie Hall. And, it's, you know, just just general information. You like Seinfeld, yes? Yes. And that's basically a bunch of neurotic people, too. Yeah, but they're all on the same level and stuff like that, too. It's you not don't just, think they don't think no, that no, one's no, playing over. above the other? No, no, not, not to the same level, not to the same. You know, they're all. Because they're all uh, New Yorkers who are kind of neurotic and hung up in their own little lives. Yeah, and... but they're all that way, not just one character. They're all that way. <laughs> so it's not, it's not the, they're all on the same page, and that works really well. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just uh, trying to get a from idea. him. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. That's fair. Me I mean, a... I, I was just curious about both of your guys' number 10 because, I mean, that was, you know, not but that it's if... surprising. I mean, it could be anybody's number 10. I mean, and your number 10 yeah. was Kramer versus Kramer. So, what was the main reason you left that behind? Because it wasn't a film? Uh, you know, no... yeah. There's I don't no know. film I mean, it... technique involved. It's more of a, a story or a, it could be a movie. Yeah, of the week. It, it's, it's, it's most, yeah. To me, it felt a little hallmarky, hallmarky a little bit, a little bit lifetime movie feel to it uh, but the acting not, rises not, not, above that. not that you had the same type of actors let me i'm not going to put dustin right. hoffman in the same category as somebody on the hallmark channel or anything but it doesn't feel like if you watched it with sincerity the first time what is there a reason to go back and watch it again i mean what would be the reason you would go back and watch it again i i think people that have been through either been a single parent or been a product of divorce or maybe uh, in a contentious relationship, maybe they're interested in the dynamics of that film. Yeah. The only reason I would say, um, what was the other question I had? Uh, da, 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 da. I have to circle back to it. But uh, yeah, that, that's the only reason. I agree that it's not, I had it where, seventh? Yeah. Uh, let me ask you that this is what it was. Kramer versus Kramer, looking at revisionist history. Do we all agree that Apocalypse Now got screwed out of the Oscar for Best Picture? Because Kramer versus Kramer won the Best Picture. If we had to do all over again, which way are you going? Apocalypse or Kramer? Apocalypse is the better film. Who deserved the Oscar? Apocalypse. Doc? It's a tough one for me, you know. I it really is. like Kramer yeah. versus Kramer. I know. I know. Uh, listen, it is Apocalypse, Apocalypse Now is a fantastic flick, too. Yeah, that's um, a tough one. It, it's a tough one. Um, I think the reason I think that, Kramer versus Kramer is actually worthy of the Oscar. At the time, I thought it was too, but looking yeah. back, yeah. listen, Apocalypse Now is a, probably a better film, but I think as a movie to watch in the nineteen seventy whatever it is here, yeah, and coming out that year, I think Kramer and Kramer is a is a is a good winner. It is a good winner. It. I think the reason that Apocalypse did not get it is because the Deer Hunter won the year before and they didn't want to go Vietnam War back to back. And also Coppola won twice for the Godfather movies. So they weren't going to throw him a third Oscar. A third Oscar. Within a short amount of time, within eight years. Hmm. So Look at that. it's just Those Oscars you never get it right, eh? You may be on to something there, Rich. You may be on, yeah. on yeah. something. All it's right, either they gonna... overload it one time on the Oscars or they just forget about people for too long and give them the honorary at the end yeah. of it and say, all right, yeah, I'm going to make up, here's your makeup Oscar. But I agree. <laughs> at the time, I remember thinking Kramer versus Kramer was the was the best movie that year. I remember watching the show saying, I'm pulling for Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah. But now, 40 years later, I have my doubts. That's just the way it works for a lot of these films, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get into our top five. We're going to do individual. So we're going to do Doc, Brian, and me around the horn at number five. What do you have? Uh, my number five, it's going to be straightforward. My number five is Deer Hunter for me. Um, look, I mean, we're in the top five movies of yeah. the best decade in the 70s, man. So of movies. My number five is the Deer Hunter. I'll, I'll let it stand on its own because it's a, it's a classic. It is yeah. a classic. What about you, Brian? What do you have at five? My number five would would have been Patton. Okay. Yeah, I I, I enjoy watching the movie. I'm 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 kind of a history buff, so I don't I don't mind going back to those types of movies. Yeah, and you've served in the military, so you're probably a buff, and that's right up your alley. So I understand that. Yeah. Uh, my number five is uh, Annie Hall. I'm a big big Woody Allen fan. I wanted to put it in the top five, so. I could argue Annie Hall or Rocky in the five, and I went with Rocky six and Annie Hall five. 
I think it's Woody Allen's best movie. Uh, it's an iconic role for Diane Keaton. Uh, that's the reason I put it there. Number five, Annie Hall. Number four, Doc. Number four for me, it's The French Connection. Good one. Um, I, I just, I, I love this movie. Like I said, we're in the top four or five here, or top three now eventually, but yeah. you get the idea, mm -hmm. man. These are, these are fantastic flicks. Um, some are just going to come down to personal taste. I think it's going to come down to personal taste right now. So and, it does. Uh, we'll find mm -hmm. out in yeah. the top three how this unfolds. So, yeah. yeah. How about you, Brian, number four? Number four for me. I've got Godfather Part Two. Okay. Um, it, you know, clearly the best, you know, best sequel to any film. I mean, the only other movie you can consider, you'd have to go into sci-fi, and that's The Empire Strikes Back. I mean, uh, but this is this is loads a, a ahead of that as far as filmmaking goes. Such an, I was wondering how they were going to do this, putting De Niro and him in the same picture, but really it's two different pictures. It's two different films two different films going on simultaneously and then the the roads the roads are us the, the people who are in the middle are, are us the observer the watchers of the film so it's great yeah sure all right cool i have uh, number four i have the deer hunter as my number four what can you say it's, it's probably the well one two we already went through the war films it's either this or apocalypse is the best Vietnam film of the era and uh, Apocalypse didn't win Best Picture, Deer Hunter did. So I have it number four. Top three. Here we go. Showtime. I have, uh, my number three was Brian's number four. It's The Godfather Part Two for me. Very good. Um, pretty self explanatory, I think, at this stage that it's, yeah, it is the best sequel. And uh, it, it's a fantastic flick. Uh, yeah. But uh, Great. yeah, number three for the 70s for me. It's the number two, The Godfathers. Brian, number three. Number three for me is The Deer Hunter. I just thought it just fell just a, a little bit short of being in the, the top two based on the based on the gravita of the of the top two, not necessarily that it in itself wouldn't have deserved being ranked there. I mean, if you took the deer hunter and put it in the 80s, it's probably the it would be the best film in the 80s. It but, would be. It's unfortunate, you know, it got released yeah. in 19, 19, 1978, so that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, my number three is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, we've talked about how great it is. Jack, Louise Fletcher, Billy Bibbit, all, all of them. Just a great movie if you want to sit there and uh, watch human behavior on the screen and the difference between normal people and maybe mentally ill people there's that thin line there this movie gives it to you so it's a it's a, a great study of human behavior one flew over the cuckoo's nest top two here it comes top two. well you didn't think it was gonna be this high up on the list for me but it's just uh it's just the way it is i can't help it i love this movie yes it is the greatest sports movie of all time it is Rocky, uh, my number mm. two. Um, it's a good one, though. I can't, I can't get around it, man. And yeah. There's different kind of genres in this whole 70s thing and uh, the love story and everything that this movie had. And when it first came out, Rocky is the second best movie of the 70s to me, man. Excellent. So if, if, if Doc doesn't like a movie, the first thing we have to say is there's not enough dirt on the characters. They need dirtier <laughs> characters. They got to look like they're dirty. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> <They> cool. <them. laughs> Very good, Brian. What do you have at two? And number two, I've got one who flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, I, the performances are just they're they're too strong. Yeah, they're too strong. There's too many of them. It's hard to it's hard to argue it. Well, I think we all have a certain picture at number one that hasn't been mentioned yet. Yeah, yeah. I think we trifected this one, Doc. Uh, sorry, what was your number two, Rich? What was your number two? Oh, I didn't hit my number two. My number two is no. Godfather Part Two. Excuse me. Oh. Mm. Godfather Part Two. Part Two. Then, yes, I think we could probably all come out and say our number one at the same time now. <laughs> we all have the Godfather, the Godfather. The trifecta Godfather. on the last uh, category. We all hit it. 
The Godfather, number one by all three of us. Yeah, yeah. obviously the most quotable film in history. You know? Uh, yeah. And just it's it's probably my most rewatchable film. This is a film that every time it's on, I can go with, from the middle on, from the beginning, the last half hour, it doesn't matter. You're going to find great uh, scenes and great uh, dialogue all the way through. Memorable scene after memorable scene. I can say the same for Godfather 2 and Cuckoo's Nest and The Deer Hunter. All these top-notch films. All are these the movies, man. They're Even Rocky and all of them. All, all nine except Annie Hall. <laughs> no, but anyway. <laughs> that was my comic relief. Um, <laughs> no, but it's true. The Godfather is uh, the cream of the crop. It's, it's it's number one for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And uh, we could do this 10 years from now. It may still be number one for everybody, yeah, you know? Probably would be. You know, you look at, and, and even, you know, the nuances, you can watch a scene and go back and see it. And, and you pick up little things that you didn't notice, either in the background or just somebody's body posture. It, it, you pay attention to that stuff in great films. You know, whatever yeah. it is. It's actually right. a good point, Rich, you know, because you, you said, you know, we could come back in 10 years from now and do this again. And number 10 through number two could be all mixed up between all three of us again. Yeah. But number one would probably still be number one. Yeah, I think so. That's, yeah. And that's pretty hard to do when you're talking about 10 films of this quality to have one sit that far above the rest. It's just there. It, it, you know. you yeah, know, you're right. I, you know, I that's don't think any of us had to. Did we ever second guess ourselves and say, eh, maybe I like this a little better than the guy? I don't think so. I think clearly that was going to be my number one from the minute I started. This. I mean, it's my it's my number one film in history. I mean, and my number two would probably be North by Northwest, but it wouldn't be close. Exactly. You know, it'd be like, yeah, it'd be like Godfather crossed the finish line and 10 seconds later, here comes North by Northwest. Right. Hobbling across the line. I mean, it's not close. Yeah. Mind you, what a great flick. I love that flick, right? So. <laughs> uh, North by Northwest, man. If we, if we had enough uh, films in the 50s that we all saw, we could do the 50s and 60s, but I, I don't know that that's in the cards for us. Maybe you cherry know? picking all the best ones, North by yeah, Northwest. Yeah, it wouldn't be as much fun. Yeah. There's not as much variety, you know? But anyway. We'd all like the same ones. Yeah. Yeah. So. All it's right, true. so we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, the '70s. This was really fun. Thank you guys again for doing this with me. It was thank you, thanks, Rich. Rich. Fantastic to uh, go through these five decades of uh, film. We're gonna come up with some maybe individual uh, actors, directors, and do some more top ten uh, film related stuff in the future. But uh, if in the meantime, I want to thank these guys, Brian, AYBL Maine, and Doc. Please leave your feedback. Uh, we appreciate our regular people that watch us all the time and comment back and forth. Uh, great having you along for the ride. So until we see you next time, thanks again. Take care. Bye. Peace out.